Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. Nick here again. We got another interview for you guys today, part of our summer series with Taylor Riggins, defensive end over at Buffalo. Taylor, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Hey, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you on. Looking forward to this one. Um, just continuing the summer series here for you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying. Taylor, I want to start here, you know, just really early on in your career growing up. I mean, starting with the basics, what kind of got you into football? I mean, what really drew you to the sport? Uh, growing up, uh, my dad was actually a basketball player, so mm -hmm. started basketball first and then started watching football. Uh, really caught my eye was the Danny and Tomlinson. Oh, yeah. It's part of the reason why I'm a Chargers fan today, but <laughs> that got me into football. And, yeah. uh, uh -huh. ever since. Yeah, I mean, you've had a really successful high school career and college career, which we'll get into a little bit later. But in high school, you were all conference, all city, all district, all region, and an all state honoree. That's a mouthful right there. Um, so I know you started your college career at Massachusetts, but coming out of high school, when you go from being a very decorated player like that, a lot of accolades, and then you kind of go to a clean slate in college. I mean, every guy's on the same playing field now, the same level. High school, I mean, you have those accomplishments, but no one really knows about them in college. It's a whole new ball game. You have to prove yourself again. How was that transition? I mean, was it hard for you, those first couple seasons? How do you play at the level that you know you're capable of? Well, um, you know, I was really lucky to be able to go to a great school like Aquinas. Um, mm -hmm. I was grateful to have, like, um, such an amazing cast that I did. Really, that program there is, is run just like a college program, and being able to be a part of that and, and grow into that has really helped make the transition to college very seamless. Mm -hmm. um, I know you played basketball in high school, too, as you mentioned. Um, so I want to ask you this. Did the skills that you learned on the court, did any of them really translate to the skills on the field? And, I mean, how would you ultimately settle on pursuing football? I know you said your dad was a basketball player. Um, so when it comes down to basketball and football, what kind of made you say, you know what, I want to pursue football, I want to be a football player at the next level, and you kind of put basketball on the back burner there. What was the decision like to kind of choose football over basketball? And then, of course, you know, do those skills translate? Um, that was mainly when um, finishing up my sophomore year, going into my junior year, mm -hmm. when I started getting interest from college programs for football, and mm -hmm. and I, I realized, hey, like I'm starting to get interest. Um, I think it's best if I start focusing all my efforts year round on on football to try and get an opportunity to play football uh, after after high school. And yeah. definitely, those those skills from basketball really really help transfer to football. Mm -hmm. You know, especially at the end, uh, yeah. lateral quickness is, is very important. You know, being able to juke out the, the linemen in close, close quarters like that translates mm -hmm. from defense and playing basketball, especially. For sure. I mean, I know, as I mentioned, you did transfer from Massachusetts. You come to Buffalo. I mean, what was the transfer decision like? How'd you kind of settle on Buffalo? And I know you're from New York as well. So how was it kind of returning home? You get that level of comfort back again. I mean, you're much closer to home uh, as opposed to Massachusetts. So how was it coming back, you know, to where you grew up and stuff? What was the transfer like? What went into the decision to transfer? I mean, that's a, that could be a tough decision. So, you know, how was that? You know, um, after spending my first year at UMass, unfortunately, I'm, I mean, it wasn't – we decided that it wasn't the best fit for me. Mm -hmm. But – um. Even though it wasn't the best fit, I'm grateful for, for everyone along the journey. You know, yeah. I made great friends there, definitely learned a lot there, and I'm very thankful for the time there. But um, just decided that Buffalo was the best fit, and, and you know, I unfortunately had to sit out, but mm -hmm. during that year, I got an opportunity to learn a lot from the guys above me um, and then really perfect my craft. You know, I learned mm -hmm. a lot from guys like Damone Harris and, and uh, Chuck Harris, and Damone, he was a Super Bowl champion this year, too, so. Yeah, still keep in contact with him and always, you know, learning from those guys. Pretty good guys to learn from, right there. And I know I've always asked any guy that's redshirted or sat out a year. I've always asked them this: How was that experience for you? Because I've talked to a lot of guys where some of them struggle with it, some of them are fine with it. They come back, you know, just as just as good. But I know it can be tough sitting out a year out of live action. So. 
what was that experience like for you? How was it kind of trying to keep your head in things, trying to stay on the right path, even though you weren't playing for one season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, coming out of high school, you're like, oh, I want to go in there. I want to go make a difference right away. But um, you definitely, definitely come to realize there's a lot you have to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you definitely have to grow a lot too. I know my first year going in, I was, I was 213. Mm-hmm. And uh, went in, thought I was gonna make plays and stuff like that, but ended up getting smacked. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after my first first semester, I got up to 240 and mm-hmm. and learned a lot that year, you know, about myself and and about strength and conditioning and its importance and everything and how important a red shirt year can really be for a lot of guys. Your development has shown in your time at Buffalo. Um, I mean, the season directly following that year where you sat out. You ranked second on your team with five sacks. You played in 14 games, also had 31 tackles. The year right after your sideline, I mean, what's kind of the mindset? What are your expectations in a year like that? Was it kind of like a, I don't want to say a test run, but was it kind of just like a season where you're like, all right, let me get back into the swing of things. Let me get back into the rhythm of the game. Or did you kind of have really big expectations for that season? I mean, what were your expectations for yourself? Were you kind of, putting the foot on the gas there or was it just a year where you tr- were basically trying to get comfortable? Um, I'd say a bit of both, you know, mm-hmm. that year I, w- I, um, I wasn't going to be the starter that year, but, but when I would go in, I knew that I would have to make the most of it and, and give it my all, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, yeah, I mean, just being behind those guys like Chuck Harris, who's now in the Jags and, mm-hmm. um, just giving it my all that year has really, really helped. And I know this past season, I mean, you really broke out this year. Uh, you had eight and a half sacks. That was second in the entire MAC conference right there. Uh, 48 tackles. And now I want to talk about the defensive end position a little bit here. I mean, we haven't had a defensive end on the site yet, so you're the first one. So this is this is big interview territory for you right here. I mean, you're, you're breaking strides here on Ed Sports Network, but... This is something I've always wondered. I think a lot of people wonder this as well. You see a lot of defensive ends in the NFL and college football, very successful individually, such as yourself this past season. How important is it for the the whole D-line as a whole to be, you know, on on task? I, I mean, how important is that team chemistry? Because I know if you're a great defensive end, it's important to be good individually, but I feel like the opportunities aren't really there if the other guys beside you aren't really doing their job. So how important is it for you guys to be connected as a front seven, more importantly, the defensive line there? How important is it for all you guys to be doing your job so that you can get those opportunities to make the plays that you need to make? Yeah, you're right. It's very important. You know, Mm -hmm. it all starts up front in the trenches. Um, all the D linemen are really close. You know, when we go out there on game day, we're mm-hmm. giving it our all, playing for the guys beside us. But to be all on the same page is huge. You know, um, one blown gap can can cost the game. Yeah. You know, so everyone being on the same page and doing their responsibilities is very important. And you know, um, other guys on the D line make cause plays to happen for other guys. Like um, mm-hmm. the, the D tackle keeping the guy in the pocket allows me enough time to get out. Mm-hmm. and um, beat the tackle and um, get the sack. And the same thing the other way. If I'm keeping the quarterback contained, mm-hmm. he's got the opportunity to go in there and, and get a sack himself. And it's very important. It all starts up front. Yeah, obviously you guys need to have really good team chemistry. I mean, as you mentioned, you guys are in the trenches. Coming in as a transfer, is it tough to kind of establish that team chemistry right away? I mean, how long did it kind of take you to really build relationships with these guys and just kind of feel used to wearing a Buffalo uniform? It didn't take too long, you know. Mm-hmm. You, it, it it happens pretty quickly when when you come in during camp and you're spending pretty much like two thirds of the day with these guys. But, yeah, um, it definitely helps coming into a local program. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of guys in the program are, are from the same hometown as myself, so that that definitely made my transition to a new school pretty pretty easy. Yeah, you had a great junior year here. I mean, you guys finished it with a Bahamas Bowl appearance. You guys had the first bowl win in program history this year, obviously. I just want to ask you, for you and as a team, I mean, how was it to kind of get the first bowl win in program history? How important was that for you? It was huge, you know, mm-hmm. um, to help prove to ourselves as players that 
you know, we can really do this. We can really um, make it far and win on the big stage. And um, it was also also big for the Buffalo community too to mm-hmm. to prove to our fans and, and local community that you know this program is is one that's you know on the rise and and can continuously win. Yeah, I spoke with Jarrett Patterson a few days back. He talked a little bit about his experience in the game. What was your experience like? I mean, bowl games, such a big stage, so many people in attendance. I'm sure it's a great experience, but going out on the field, actually playing in a game like that, I mean, just how is that? You know, being down in the Bahamas was awesome. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I mean, yeah. a lot of guys on the team may not even get that opportunity again, but for, for the whole team to be able to go down there, different country and, and wonderful weather and play the game that we love was huge for us. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's a time for fun and there's a time for focus. And and uh, when we went down there, we, we had our fun. But at the end of the day, we knew that um, there's a game on the line and we had to, to stick to our plan and, and come out victorious. Got the job done. Got the win. First win in program history in a bowl game. Um, you elected to come back for your senior season here. You guys are coming off a really good year just as a team in general. You're coming off an unbelievable year personally. I mean, what are your goals for your senior season here? Do you have any that you're really trying to accomplish, really trying to build on? I mean, what are your hopes, not only for yourself, but for this team in your final season of college football? Personally, um, my goals this year are to, to beat all the stats that I had last year. But really the bigger goal is, is to bring home a MAC championship and another mm-hmm. bowl win for the whole program. But sure. uh, I think it really starts, you know, now each and every day. And then the way you get to reach those goals is by getting better each and every day and Mm -hmm. making the guys around you each and every day uh, better. You guys are certainly coming off a year that you can definitely build off of. And I think that you guys are, can only go up from here. I mean, you come off a year like that, like you guys just had first ball win in program history, solid regular season, really just kind of, I would assume it's a good feeling in the locker room, good team chemistry right now. Got a lot of guys returning with a lot of talent and I want to end on two questions here. The first one is a fun one. You got to have fun with this one. And then the second one, it's going to make you think a little bit. But first one here, I mean, if you could sack one quarterback in the NFL, past or present, who would it be and why? Ooh, I'd say, I'd say Tom Brady. Of course it would. Of I course. <laughs> Man. As a Chargers fan, you know, he's, uh, he's eliminated us in the playoffs several times. Mm-hmm. And- yeah, I'd, I'd love to be able to bring him down. I th- you know, this comes up quite a bit. A lot of a lot of guys I talk to, there's a little bit of Patriot slander. Our site's based out of Massachusetts. So some of us at the site, myself included, really big Patriots fans. Now, if I had interviewed, if I had interviewed you last year and you said Tom Brady, I, I'd probably be a little bit mad. Right now, right now, honestly, you sack him. I'm posting it everywhere. We're tweeting it. Instagram, you'll see it everywhere. You have every right to sack him now. I don't care what happens to him. Um, of course, now, if he ever hears this, he might have might have lost my trust a little bit, but it's fine. It's fine. But, yeah, um, that would certainly be the guy to sack, I think, right there. And I think, um, you know, I think it, I don't want to say he'd be an easy sack, but I think, you know, at, at his age now, if he was trying to scramble out of the pocket, I think he'd have a pretty good chance of chasing him down. So um, that would <laughs> – that would certainly be a, a great moment for you, um, no doubt about it. Personally, I'd like to sack him now, too, um, because he is just not on my good side. But anyway, I could go on I could go on about that for, for hours and hours, but this question is the big one right here. I mean, there's been some chatter of you being taken in the NFL draft down the road here. I'm sure that's a great feeling. Um, people even saying you could be a top 100 prospect here in 2021. Obviously, you elected to come back your senior year, so you'll finish up your time at Buffalo. Um, but if a team were on the fence about choosing you in this 2021 draft year, I mean, your chances are really good. You're going to be watched this season, um, potential through the roof here. What would you tell that team to kind of seal the deal? I mean, what do you believe you could bring to an NFL franchise? Um, I'd say, you know, I'm a, I'm a very hardworking, uh, mm-hmm. disciplined person. Um, you know, as as you can see on my film, I'm, I'm very fundamental, mm-hmm. and and play with a nonstop motor, and and I'm always giving it my all in, in whatever I do. I think that's, 
I think, you know, NFL teams like to hear that, especially in today's game. Very physical. I mean, it just seems to get more physical year in and year out. And, I mean, I guess relaying off of that to really close up here, I mean, how does it feel to kind of see yourself included in those talks about the NFL draft and stuff? I mean, as a kid growing up, that's the dream right there. I mean, that is the pinnacle of success. So, I mean, what's the emotion like? And how do you just kind of stay focused, not really get ahead of yourself, um, but just kind of focus on this year, focus on the task at hand. But at the same time, I mean, are you looking down the road at the NFL here? I mean, what's what's the feeling like? Yeah, you know, it's, it's always been a dream of mine growing up, and it's mm-hmm. definitely cool to see things like that um, come out. But at the end of the day, I don't have it yet. You know, I yeah. still have another season to go through. Uh, there's still a lot more work to be done. There's a lot more things I can improve on. And, and to get those things, i got to keep working in it day in and day out. Senior season coming up should be a really good one for you guys. Buffalo is going to be a great team to watch this year. You guys' defense is going to be a fun defense to watch this year. Wishing you the best of luck in your senior season, of course. Hopefully everything gets started on time and whatnot. But Taylor Riggins, everyone, Buffalo defensive end. Taylor, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Absolutely great to have you on. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. No problem at all. We would love to have you on again after this senior season. If you ever do sack Tom Brady, you're going to be the first guy that we call. (laughs) get you on and and you can just trash talk them the entire time we would love that here um but anyway guys make sure you follow taylor on twitter we're going to put a link uh to his twitter down below so you guys can follow his senior season and his career after college here and then make sure that you go check out buffalo football we're going to put a link to their page for news and updates so you guys can check out that as well but guys thanks so much for joining us here on edge sports network for our summer series of interviews And as always, we'll see you guys next time.